I said time and time again last year, 2022 is not going to be a good year for a whole lot of people. It's not going to be a, year for, a good year for Boris Johnson and the Conservatives. It is not going to be a good year for Brexit. It is definitely not going to be a good year for the Brexiteers. Unfortunately, it is not going to be a very good year for UK manufacturers, poor people in the UK, the young, the old, um, the ill, uh, the disabled. I, I generally think this year is going to be bring a whole lot of hardships to a whole lot of people and the fact that this year especially we are going to see brexit really kick in like if you thought last year was brexit kicking in when we went over those all those stories that was just the prelude to this year remember we've just had today games workshop come out and say we've lost money because of brexit games workshop currently at the moment probably one of the, again the biggest one of the biggest companies like biggest uk companies in the world have said we've lost out because of brexit now it is very very unusual for uk businesses to speak out and I think at 2016, if businesses had spoken out, but again, it's not in the, should we say, the British thing to do for businesses to speak out. But I think as time goes on, I think more British businesses will feel empowered to speak out and say, hey, um, all our problems are being caused by Brexit. And I think that will be, again, a very big indicator. Uh, to when, shall we say, we can start the process of rejoining. But again, a lot of people are, are now still eyeing up, um, again, pushing parties to, again, rejoin. So, again, so the, the pro-European movement here in the UK uh, is a lot bigger and far more active and far more younger than uh, the Brexit one. So, we'll definitely have to keep an eye out and see how that goes. But, Anyway, we're talking about UK manufacturers so far. So uh, before we do go jumping into this, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one off station link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So on with this. So this article comes from The Guardian with title of Brexit changes will add to soaring costs in 2022, one UK manufacturers. And again, we were told in 2016, Brexit's going to be great for manufacturers. It's going to be so cheap for them. It's going to be, make them unleash their potential. Oh, dear. Manufacturers have warned that Brexit will add to the soaring costs facing British industry. Amid concerns that the customs delays and the red tape will rank among the biggest challenges for firms this year. Uh, Make UK the industry body representing over 20,000 manufacturing firms of all sizes from across the country said that while optimism among its members had grown, it had been undermined by the after effects of the UK's departure from the EU. One year on from the end of the transition period, two thirds of the industrial company leaders in its survey of over 228 firms said that Brexit had moderately or significantly hampered their businesses. More than a half of firms warned they were likely to suffer damage this year from custom delays due to the import checks and changes to, to product labelling. And according to the 2022 Make UK uh, PwC Senior Executive Survey, Brexit disruption remains among the biggest concerns facing industry bosses for the year ahead as Britain's departure from the EU complicates with the fallout from COVID-19 and the rising costs now facing companies. Delays at the customs, the additional costs from meeting the separate regulatory regimes in the UK and the EU, and of course the reduced access to migrant workers were among the top concerns raised in this survey. It is clear that from these figures that Brexit and the global COVID-19 pandemic have had a very much scarring effect on the mentality of many businesses, which are traumatised by the ongoing delays and disruptions caused to their supply chains, the report said. The warning came as other research showed that the British economy was losing steam 
and at the end of the year as the Omicron variant hit, uh, hit the demand for goods and services. And according to the analysis of leading businesses and the surveys by the, D D by the BDO, the accountancy firm, and the Center for Economics and Business Research, business optimism and output growth fell in December as firms tried to grapple with the fallout of the latest wave of infections. A separate survey by HIS Market and NatWest found that the activity dropped in 11 out of the 12 regions of the UK, with the market loss in momentum, especially in London and the Northeast, slipping into, uh, into contractions. Kate Crossworthy, the partner and accountants at BDO, said the ongoing uncertainty around Omicron is providing a further blow to UK businesses, which have already tried to battle a string of supply chain issues, the threat of the further COVID restrictions and the inf inflationary pressures of this past year. Despite the impacts of, of Brexit and the Omicron variant, Make UK and PwC said that three quarters of companies in its senior executive survey expect conditions in manufacturing to either improve over the coming year. Almost three quarters of companies said that they believe the conditions for the sector would improve with about 30, with about sorry, 73% believing the opportunities outweighed the risk. The optimism was tailed with a very separate survey of the chief financial officers of the larger companies by Deltoit, another accountancy firm. The last quarterly survey recorded showed that 37% were planning on increasing capital investment in the next year. More of the companies were considering expansion into new products, services, or markets than at any other time since 2019. So it's in 2009. The Detroit poll did show that the financial executives believed that Brexit would be a very significant negative for UK EU trade and migration. And although the confidence was tempered by the impact of Brexit, the COVID-19 and the risk costs said the Make UK survey did show that two thirds of companies regarded the UK as a competitive location for manufacturing. Again, I sort of disagree with our massive productivity problems that we've got in this country. Um, again, bear in mind when you've got Spain and like, you know, <laughs> where there is a, you know, the culture of, you know, um, you know, having, you know, uh, you know, the, especially during obviously the hot summers of, you know, stopping work early because of the heat caused in the country. Um, this will have a, a massive problem. And I think this is only going to get worse. Um, I'm, I'm very, I'm not very optimistic, but to be honest about some of these companies believing that there's going to be an uh, opportunity outweighed by these risks. Um, I, I don't see it. The, neither do a lot of economists. So around a third of companies in the survey were also looking to try and reshore their supply chains or to rely on more domestic sources following the very severe disruption to delivery to international components and materials. Make UK case that the challenges uh, in the short term and the shift could represent the possible, uh, possible depth of the just-in-time delivery supply chain businesses model. That may be a good thing for British manufacturers who are now developing ways to try and ensure that they are more resilient and less exposed to unforeseen international risks in the future, it added. So overall, um, it is not a very good picture uh, for UK manufacturing, especially here. And I, I've, we've covered this all last year. Several businesses that were losing 20 and 30% of their businesses because of Brexit, because people just weren't ordering enough. You know, I, I've said it before, what's the knock-on effect from that? If you have a business and you've lost 20 to 30% of your business, that's 20% of your revenue gone down. You are losing money. What What's the knock-on effect to that? Well, you don't grow. You don't hire any more people. You might have to, again, let people let people go. But this is what we've been warning about for the longest time. I think this year we are in for a massive, massive economic troubles this year. Um, you've already got the rest of Europe. They're returning to pre-pandemic levels of their economies. Britain isn't. <laughs> we are st staggering beyond repair. And the Conservatives just don't seem to have an answer for it, which is incredibly worrying, considering possibly this year there might be a, a general election 
one might happen certainly next year but again we'll we'll have to wait and see though uh, what happens so as always um please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below link to my patreon page one off donation link buy me coffee thank you very much to everyone who does support the channel that way and of course the youtube membership links are uh, open down below as well and of course we'll see you all next time